Hello again fellow RVers. So today we're going to be fixing a surging issue with our generator. Now this typically happens because you haven't run the generator for a couple of months. The fuel in the carburetor has evaporated leaving a sticky mess which blocks the jets and it needs to be cleaned out. Now I know there are lots of videos on the subject using seafoam which we'll be using later. It's a great product. First of all we're going to be taking off the float bowl, cleaning that out, cleaning the main jet and then afterwards we're going to fit an inline fuel shutoff valve to try and prevent this from happening in the future. So coming right up. Okay, so I'm sure like a lot of people watching my videos, you have a love-hate relationship with your RV generator. Uh, we've made quite a few videos on this subject, how to repair them and fix them. So if you do have some trouble, check them out. They might help you out. But for now, we're going to clean the carburetor out and we're going to give this a good, a good going over. So I want to show you first of all what's happening though. So we're going to prime it, start it up, and you can hear what the generator is doing. So you can kind of hear there that the generator is going up and down, it's not happy, it's, it's not running very well, and that's without a load. As soon as I put load on it, it gets even worse. So most of the time that is due to the carburetor being blocked up, the jets being blocked, because it hasn't been run for some time and it needs a good clean. Now just for safety, because we have to remove the fuel line, just for safety I'm going to disconnect the main battery terminal because I don't want to suddenly press this and all of a sudden fuel starts squirting out of the of the pipe so we're going to take a, a a half inch half inch wrench and we're just going to gently just very gently just unscrew this this is not very strongly solenoid so be careful with it once we remove this electrical cable we want to make sure we've got some electrical tape because if this touches ground there'll be sparks fireworks and it's not going to be very safe so we just need a little bit like six inches long and once you take it off, just make sure we get that wrapped up straight away. We're going to remove this little uh, cover here. It's a Torx 30. We'll just pop this off. Okay, that just lifts up out the way. We can put that to one side. Now we can get to the uh, to the drain valve at the bottom of the uh, float bowl. So we need a little a little canister to catch the fuel so we just pop that underneath and we're going to undo this little screw just here and this is going to drain the float bowl so we're going to get all of the fuel out of it before we take it apart okay now remember to close it back up again when you're finished you don't want to leave this open so just nip it back up and there's the fuel that was in the float bowl now interestingly enough this is the very reason this gets clogged up in the first place. If you were to just put this to one side, within a couple of hours it would just evaporate into the atmosphere. And that's what's happening inside the carburetor. The reason this doesn't happen in your everyday modern engine is because they're fuel injected. So everything's sealed from the tank all the way up to the combustion chamber. With a carburetor it's not, it still has access to the atmosphere. So when you leave it sitting for a couple of months, the fuel just evaporates back through the, uh, back through the system and it just leaves a sticky mess in the bottom. Okay. So we're going to take off the, uh, the fuel line. Okay, get that out of the way. And just be careful in case there is a little bit of fuel in the line, but um, it should be okay. We can just set that to one side for a minute. So next job, we need to remove this earth cable just down here. And you'll notice also the earth cable sits behind the starter frame. It gets a better earth on the engine if it sits behind it, so make sure that goes back in that way. 
Now this is the hardest one to undo and the one that everybody hates when they're removing their carburetor. You can see here the other wire that goes up behind the float bolt. Now if you have a long pair of pliers, you can grab a hold of the one behind. Don't pull it too hard, you don't want to pull it off at the back. But you can grab a hold of it. And you can just pull the front one and it will come off. And you can put it back on the same way. You can just pinch this with a long pair of pliers and you can just push it back on again. Now the reason we've taken this off is because we need to undo this big nut under here which is I believe a three quarter. I'm using a 19, it's practically the same size, especially for a nut that big. Um, and the reason we took this off is we're going to slide the, the, um, the ring terminal, the ring spanner, through the terminals and up onto the actual nut itself if you can see it there okay and then we can get on the nut and we can just gently undo it just a turn at a time and what will happen is it will start to come loose and eventually then you can take the wrench off and you can do the rest of it with your fingers making sure the wire goes round with it we don't want the wire to get caught and get damaged now as you can see I've got this off so there was no fuel left inside it because we'd already drained it but the fuel would have probably come about halfway up this, this float bowl. And that float is there, just like, for example, in your, in your toilet system, in your bathroom. This is designed to, to shut off when, when there's enough fuel sitting in here. So now we've got this apart, what we're going to do is we're going to take, um, take it into the workshop and give it a good clean. Okay, so now we're in the nice air conditioned workshop out of that Florida heat. We can get on and clean this float bowl in this, uh, this jet. So I've just got it on the nice table with some, some rag. A couple of wrenches, we need a 17 and 19, or if you're Imperial, you can use um, uh, 3 quarters and 11 sixteenths. We're also going to need a small piece of uh, electrical cable. Now, we want to use electrical cable because it's a bit more forgiving uh, we don't want to be putting anything really too sharp or, or, or aggressive through the holes of this uh, of this jet. Um, we also need some brake cleaner or some parts cleaner, carb cleaner, whichever one you choose. Uh, some, some paper towel. And also, when we put this back together, we need to be aware that this is made up of three crush washers. And they are going to need to be uh, sanded down slightly to take off any imperfections before we seal it back up again. I'll explain that as we're going through it. Okay, so let's get this apart. So the first thing we're gonna do is, we, this, this will just come off of here now, but you'll see as I pull it out, there's a small uh, crush washer inside, which needs to be in place when we put it back in. But before we do that, we need to give it a sand down and clean it. So we'll explain that in a moment. We'll just pop those two to one side, and we're gonna take this apart first of all. So. You see here, it's all a little bit green and a little bit nasty. Uh, this is slightly blocked, but not too bad. So first thing we're gonna do is separate these two. So that's gonna be your 17 and 19, or if you're Imperial, like I say, your three quarter and your uh, five, uh, 11 sixteens. Let's just take off that crush washer for the minute. And the easiest way to get this off is to just put one, the large one on first, and then the small one, so they're slightly apart, and just squeeze them together, like so. And they'll just come apart. All right. Now once we take this off, you'll see there's another crush washer, just here, which is also going to need to be sanded down. We'll put that to one side. Now this, make sure this is springy, it's not stuck and gooey, but we'll take it out anyway. There's a small spring in there, that can come out too. Okay, and we'll just give that. And if you've got some safety glasses, I suggest you put them on. Um, I've got mine on, I know you can't see, but I've got mine on at the moment. And all we're gonna do is just give that a squirt in there and, uh, and get any goo from inside out. We are gonna sea foam this afterwards, um, like we see everybody else do on the internet. Um, but I just want to give it a fighting chance and get as much gunk out as I can. Right, we'll just give this a little clean as well. 
to get any garbage off of there. We can go ahead and pop that spring back in, put that back in, just make sure it's just make sure it's it's okay. Set that to one side. This is the main issue. So the fuel collects, let me just take that crush washer out. The fuel collects inside the bowl and then it goes down through the well the altimeter screw, okay, on the side here. You can see it goes from zero altitude to this one says six and a half thousand feet. And the more you turn it, the more it will basically lean out the mixture. So if it's on zero, this is going to be maximum fuel. And if it's turned up to six and a half thousand, it's going to be less fuel because of course, when you're that high up, there's less air and less oxygen in the atmosphere to mix with the fuel. So the way this is designed, the fuel collects inside the bowl, it goes down through the altimeter screw, let me get my big fat finger out of the way, it goes down through the altimeter screw in the side, collects in this little area here, and then you can see the holes in the, um, in the main jet, it goes through those holes, and then comes up this big hole into the carburetor. So it's imperative that we keep all this nice and clean. Um, you can take the carburetor off and clean it uh, even more, but we're going to do that with seafoam. I think that's quite sufficient. But for now, let's just get this um, all nice and clean inside there as much as we can. We'll turn the altimeter, altimeter screw while we're doing it. Let's get the carb cleaner on the bottom and we'll just give this a, a, nice, a nice going over. Okay, swish it around a little bit. We're not going to waste it, so we'll pour it straight into here. Now this is where your piece of wire comes in handy. Right, so you see these small little holes that go around the, uh, around the jet. So we want to just make sure the wire, again, a bit of copper wire, it's more forgiving than the jet itself. We're just going to push this through all of them and we're going to make sure that nothing's blocked. So there's a few to go through, so just take your time. Okay, just give it a twist, give it a push, clean all these out. Make sure, of course, um, no wire gets trapped in there. And let us you see it breaking off there, look. Make sure no wire gets trapped in there and left um, once you've finished. But just go through all of these. So I can now see, I can now see through there, and they all look, see through that one, see through that one, they all look nice and clean, I can even look down, and that, there's a little bit of goo in there, so I'll give it a little, um, I'll give it a little clean out. All right, so I'm happy that that is clean. Now, of course, we need to put it back together. This is where it becomes important that we take our piece of uh, sandpaper, 220 grit, it's quite sufficient. And all we're gonna do is we're just gonna get, if you can see, we're just gonna get our, our crush washer on top of it, put our finger on, and we're just literally gonna go round and we're gonna smooth it out. The reason we do this is because these copper and aluminium washers are designed to crush up any imperfections in the seat of this uh, in the seat of this bar just here. Sorry, my, my, I'm not very good with the camera this close up. Um, any imperfections along here, all right, around this edge, that connect up also with this one. Um, these crush washers are designed that when you tighten them up, they, they squash into all of those imperfections. And of course, if you don't put the washer, so it's, it's practically impossible to put the washer back on exactly the same way that you took it out. Okay, so just be a little bit patient, go around, make sure that all of the imperfections are off. But you can see now, we've got a nice shiny edge on both sides.
So the first things first, we're going to make sure that this spring is still inside there. I'm going to take the, uh, the aluminium washer, I'm going to put it over the top. Okay, and then we're going to screw this back on again. Now, just like when we took it apart, you can do the reverse. You can put one wrench on, you can put the other wrench on, and you can squeeze them together. It's quite often the easiest way to do these. So you just keep them apart and then just squeeze them together. Now, because it's a crush washer, you need to do exactly that. You need to crush it. But don't go too crazy but you want to make sure it's sealed. We'll make sure we check this afterwards that it's not leaking before we uh, run the engine. So that's that bit done. Uh, we've got one crush washer to go on there and we've got one crush washer to go inside here. Okay so remember inside here we have the um, crush washer. We don't want that to fall out. Excuse me I've got an itchy nose. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of grease. This will burn off as soon as we start the engine anyway, so don't worry about it. Now I've got an itchy eye. And we're going to put a little bit of grease on the crush washer. Okay. And then we're just going to put that inside so it's nice and sticky. Yeah. And another trick we want to do is... If you can see, if we were to take the, uh, the jet and push it through this first, there's a chance that we could move this crush washer as we're doing it up. So what I like to do is I like to get the bowl and put it in place. That assures that the crush washer is in place. So when we push this through, we can't move the crush washer. So now make sure you've got your copper crush washer on there. We're just gonna go ahead and Keeping the bowl pressed up against the carburetor, we're just going to screw the main jet back in. Okay, with this out of the way, it's so much easier. Okay, so once that's in, we'll take our 19 mil or our three eight, uh, three quarters, and just in reverse, we'll just put that through, and we're just going to tighten this up. Now we're going to have to move the bowl a little bit just to make sure that the altimeter is in a, a, a readable position okay we just get the bowl in the right place and then we can tighten up again it's a crush washer so we do need to crush it but we don't want to go too crazy and strip anything so you just have to feel it as you're going, all right? But just keep going until there's a fair amount of resistance. That should be good. So that's all nicely back in place now, okay? So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll get our long pliers and we'll just grab this one at the back. We need to pinch it down the wire because this one goes over the top of it. So now we can, if you can see, we can put it on nice and tight okay nice and snug so now we can put the start switch back in just dropping that back into position over the top of the cable come on baby there you go don't fight it you're gonna lose all right one screw in the side and remember this one on the front has the earth. So we're going to put the earth just behind the, start for the starter frame. So it's got a better contact with the engine. I can just do it up by hand first. Then we'll take our little cover. That just drops down the back. Put those two screws in. So 
So, like I said at the beginning of the video, what we're going to do is we're going to be fitting a fuel shut-off valve. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because instead of just turning the generator off inside and allowing fuel to sit in the float bowl while you're away or not using the RV, what we're going to do now is we're just going to fit an inline shut-off valve and in, instead we're just going to close the fuel off and allow the generator to starve itself of fuel. That way we know the float bowl is going to be empty and less chance of contamination in the future. So first of all, we'll go ahead and we'll put our fuel line back on. Okay, we'll do it up. And then we're going to do something you don't get to do very often. I, li I like things like this. We're going to get a nice sharp pair of scissors and we're going to cut our fuel line in half. The reason being, the fuel shut-off valve is going to fit just there. Okay, so find a nice area for it. I think about there would be nice. And we're just going to... Nice sharp pair of scissors will cut that, no problem. You're going to need two, um, two hose clamps. So we'll pop one on first. I like my hose clamps all the same way. We'll pop that one up there. I won't put it on just yet in case I drop it. So again, we'll make sure we get the flow correct. Flow says that way. So we'll turn it round because we want the flow going from the bottom to the top. Okay. So we'll put one on. Do that up. Now these... Um, I'll put a link in the description. I might even put a link on the page right now. This cost me, um, I believe, about $6-ish. I can't remember off the top of my head, so I apologise. Um, but whatever it was, it's not expensive, and it could save you uh, a lot of heartache, a lot of headache, a lot of angry people in the RV with no air conditioning because the generator won't work, blah, 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 blah. You know how it goes. So we've got one more, we can do that up. Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll put our battery cable back on, um, making sure that it doesn't touch ground. And we'll take off the electrical tape, put that back on the solenoid, put the washer and the nut back on. Okay, that's nice and tight, not too tight, but tight enough. All right, so now we're gonna press the prime button and we're gonna check for leaks. Also, we have to fill up the bowl because remember we emptied the fuel bowl. So we can hear the pump running. The note has just changed, so it shows it's building pressure. We just prime it one more time because it was completely empty. I can't see any leakage around here. All looks good. Let's see if it starts. Okay, well, not bad for a first time, and it already sounds better than it did before we started. We still haven't done the sea foam yet, and I'm aware this video is getting a bit long, so what I'll probably do is, I'll probably make another video doing the sea foam, but just quickly, I want to show you why we fitted the fuel shut-off valve. Now, the best way uh, to leave your RV if you're going to store it, if you don't have a sea foam system in place, is to empty the uh, float bowl. Now, you would have to remove this, and you'd have to get a little tray, and you'd have to unscrew the screw like we did earlier in the video, and you'd have to get rid of that fuel somewhere, which is not really very uh, convenient. So the reason I put this in is because what we do now is we, we, the generator's running, we just turn the valve closed, and we let the generator stop. So we're going to do that now, just to quickly demonstrate, and then I'll show you if at all there's any fuel left in the float bowl. So let's just start it up again. Okay, 
Okay, so that took approximately about 40 or 50 seconds to drain itself for fuel. You'll notice that the code's flashing, of course, because it, it ran out of fuel, but it's no different to you running out of fuel if it only had a quarter of a tank in the, in the, in the gas tank. So we can just clear that code just by pressing the start button twice. But what I'm more interested in is checking to see if anything comes out the float bowl, because remember at the start, there was quite a lot of gasoline in here. So let's open this up. and we see maybe eight or nine drops. Now the advantage with this is, you can now leave your RV for a month or so, and there's not gonna be some sticky mess in the carburetor when you come back to it. Uh, if you want, you can now shut, open this back up again. The pump's not on, so nothing's gonna come through, but it's ready for when you wanna start it up the next time. Okay, so... Uh, I'll put a link up in the top corner now for the seafoam video, which I'm going to now do a thorough seafoam clean, if you want to watch that. Um, feel free to leave us a comment. Let me know what you think about the uh, fuel shutoff valve. Would you be interested in fitting one? Um, I think it's going to work out great. But Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.